and welcome to the shop. Today's video is a continuation of the Cavco video that I put up last on my YouTube channel. Um, and that is, we're going to make a Z height touch plate for this uh, CNC radar. Well, actually it'll be for my little one, which is just off camera here as well. Uh, I've got some 12 millimeter aluminium and this is uh, four inches by four inches, but uh, it's, it, the piece that I'm actually cutting out is only uh, 75 millimeters. Um, and so it's going to be two layers of this uh, and it'll be screwed together. Uh, I'll fetch you in a little bit closer to see the setup that I've got here. So what I've got here is it's in a million engineers vice. It's really heavy. Uh, it's probably uh, 25 pounds, something like that in weight. Uh, and I've already got one piece of aluminium in there clamped up. Because I am cutting aluminium on a CNC router, I require quite a bit of cooling because these are high RPM router head cutters or spindles. You know, we're going to be doing most of the work with a, a six mil, six millimeter or quarter of an inch two flute end mill. So to be able to get the torque of this motor, you know, to keep it all running, although this is a very small tool, you have to have this spinning around about 15,000 RPM, between 15,000 and 18,000 RPM. Otherwise, it's just going to bog down and stall and snap the tool. So you've got to keep it spinning relatively quickly. Normal circumstances, if you was on a, a milling machine, you'd be, you'd be running this cutter at probably somewhere in the region of about uh, three to four thousand RPM maximum. You do it slightly different with the CNC router. We require cooling. Now I've always cut aluminium on my CNC router, or when I've cut it on my CNC router, I always use WD-40 as a cutting agent, cutting and cooling agent, and I'm normally here with an air gun blowing the swarf and debris away, which are very, very fine chips. But recently, I've acquired a, an impulse compressor, which is norm normally used with a laser for blowing air for the nozzle. Uh, this one's uh, one of the maximum size that you can get. Uh, they're also used for aquariums as well, for blowing the air into, into the water of aquariums. And just as a bit of a demonstration, I'll show you, it's, they're quite effective actually. And although they make a noise, it's much quieter than the big air compressor running over there. So I'll just switch it on so you can have a listen. So it's not too bad. It's fairly quiet and the airflow is, uh, you see it's blowing this plastic around and it's quite powerful. It's really all the air that you need. I've actually uh, have uh, something like a, a fog buster on order but it hasn't arrived yet. So I'm really going to jerry rig this up so I have the you know, the tube, something like this, you know, sort of directed in the, the area where we, we want the, you know, we want the airflow to be. And uh, I'll just be doing the video with this just to see if, hope it all sort of is efficient enough to, to, to work, do what I want it to do. Because this router table is MDF, this, this wasteboard is MDF, you know, I didn't want to bolt this straight down onto the MDF and spray it with WD-40 and what have you and you know because it'll make this swell even though it's WD-40 it'll it'll ruin the, the the tabletop so I thought okay so I, what I've done is I've built just a, a very quick you know wooden box to fit this in and it's all screwed in there very firmly firm enough for this particular job so this box is to contain as many chips coming off it as I can, you know, sort of spreading all over the machine and everywhere, and to contain any WD-40 that's sprayed off, um, and to, you know, if there's any sort of build-up of WD and it sort of runs out anywhere, 
I've got it actually clamped down onto a, a, a bit of a plastic sheet that hopefully is going to stop 99% of anything going onto my wasteboard. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is start the everything up and we will home the machine and then we will bring it over and uh, make the G54 or the start of the program here, the, the zero, 00. And uh, I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so the first operation is I'm manually going to take uh, you know the head over and bring it forward um, because otherwise we're going to be waiting an age for Mac 3 to do it automatically. So. Okay, now we'll ask Mac 3 to zero the machine hop. Okay, so I've got a center tool in the chuck now, so I'm going to take it over now and register the G54 or the work offset. Now, a work offset is quite simply is you're, you're telling the, the computer and the router then um, where exactly the start of the the job is now in this particular case using Cavco I started the job or made the zero zero position in the center of the work and I've got a little little X on here and we're going to register that now I'm going to take the tool over and uh, register in Mac 3 that this is where the start position of the job is. Okay, so I'm going to. This is moving now too fast uh, for really set setting the the Z height and any of the axes actually. So I'm just going to slow it down in Mac 3 and I'll show you that. So to slow the feed rate down you'll notice here it's in a percentage form so just by clicking on the minus here it's very easy to take the speed down. 10% should be fine but we're going to do another thing here we're going to load pro the program, the first program which is just really marking or spot marking where the drill needs to drill just to stop the drill from wandering so we'll go file load G code and it's on my desktop let me scroll down uh, that's the drilling strategy there but I have a spot drilling strategy double click and it's in so now we will set the zero zero of the part. What we'll do is we're going to get it right over that. I don't know where the camera's picking up that X. There's a faint X there that I've just scribed. So let's take it down. That's still a little fast. I'm going to slow it up a bit more. I'm just going to find the center of that X. Down a little touch more and like a little touch. So I'm trying to keep my head out of the way of the camera as well. You know that will do absolutely fine. So now I'm going to just drop it down a little bit more. Okay here we go. Now what I do is I just put a piece of paper underneath here and I just move the paper slightly until the tool just traps the paper. That just just got it there. Okay, so it's just trapped it. And now I'll show you what to do in Mark 3. So in Mark 3, after you found that X, Y, Z, 0 position, you just make sure that you're 
So now that's machine home. This is now the part home position then, or part zero. What we need to do now is come here onto the X uh, zero. All right, so it's X zero, Y zero, Z zero. Now a very important thing you should do, and that, that is come here to the regen and press that. And you notice it go right through the program or the G code and then this will jump into the middle of the screen. Now that's Mac 3 sort of rejigging itself and making sure that it's on the same page as you. Okay, so we're just going to lift the tool up off the piece of work. Now I'm just going to raise the jog level up to 10% which is fine and now we will prepare to do this first uh, not drilling strategy but spot drilling strategy okay so we'll remove the piece of paper uh, just give it a little tiny bit of WD-40 uh, I'm not using air blowing or anything like that at the moment uh, let's Start the rotor head up or the spindle. A little bit faster. Okay, and we will start this program going. Okay, here we go. And that's it.